dogs have been in the company of Irish people since their earliest records of civilization. For centuries, these Irish dogs consisted of large hounds that were used for hunting, as well as smaller dogs or terriers that were vermin killers and companions. As the Irish feudal system evolved, the hounds became the property of wealthy landowners and people of title and standing, while terriers belonged to tenant farmers who could not legally own any chattel or animal of any value. So as tenant farmers never travelled outside Ireland, the four Irish breeds of terriers developed quite independently of the evolution of the various terrier breeds of England, Scotland and Wales. The Glen of Amal originated as a specialised badger hunter. He was also valued for his abilities around the farm and in the sporting field, even partaking in the occasional organised dogfight. Historically, he is best remembered as the Turnspitz dog as he propelled a dog wheel in a treadmill device used for operating churns or fire spits in ancient Irish kitchens. Although the Glen has been known in Ireland for centuries, it is only in the last couple of decades he has appeared in show rings in the rest of the world. The Glen of Amal is the shortest of the four Irish terrier breeds, standing no more than 14 inches high. But he is a big dog in a small frame, with great strength and substance for the size of the dog. His body is longer than it is high, with his top line rising slightly over his very strong loin. His hindquarters are proportionately well muscled. His short, bowed, well boned front legs, plus his powerful hindquarters, made the Glen ideal to propel the turnspits in Irish kitchens all those years ago. The Glen's head is of good width and fair length, with extremely strong jaws and teeth. His ears should always be small and row-shaped or half-pricked. His coat is harsh with undercoat and is any shade of wheaten, brindle or blue. The three other breeds of Irish Terriers stand just over one and a half feet tall. Their function, as well as their origin, appears somewhat intermingled. When the tenant farmers worked their small, badly fenced potato gardens, the purpose of their terrier was as a guardian of the household and general utility dog, as well as keeping the small farms clear of pigs, neighbours' domestic animals, rats and other vermin. This patrol went on 24 hours a day. The terrier's bed in ditches or haystacks added to his reputation of endurance and reckless pluck. So the breed we know as the Irish Terrier is still described in today's breed standard as the daredevil. At first his ears were cut or cropped to make them stand erect. This practice was later banned. Let's now watch the Irish Terrier develop from his role as protector of peasants' properties into today's racy, elegant show dog. The change in the Irish Terrier over more than a century he has developed as a show dog has not been as dramatic as many of the other terriers we have considered. Although his tail has become higher set, his overall elegance and raciness, caused by his moderately long body, is unique in today's terrier group.
A straight and almost flat coat has always been prized, originally designed not to hinder his activities as a vermin hunter. Today, it should never be so long as to hide the natural outline of the dog. This means that trimming the coat has always been kept to a minimum, so the outline of the Irish Terrier is not sculptured. Rather, his coat is kept tidy for the show ring by hand stripping or plucking keeping the texture harsh and wiry and free from softness or silkiness. Although his coat may vary through shades of red wheaten or yellow red, there should never be any trace of black shading. So the Irish Terrier is always a whole coloured red dog. Myth and fable tells how Irish tenant farmers used to creep onto the estates of those with title and standing with their terrier bitches in season and mate them with the wealthy landowners' Irish wolfhounds. These were noble, rugged sporting dogs of great strength and grey-blue coats. They improved the Kerry Blue's pace and scenting powers so he could be a general utility dog and guard the household, as well as killing vermin. The Irish wolfhound gave the Kerry Blue not only his modern colour, but also his determination, skill and ability to pursue and catch game, plus the fortitude with which he could battle with it and destroy it. The Kerry Blue is born black or black with tan points, and clears to any shade of blue on maturity. Like the Irish Terrier we have just considered, the Kerry stands 18 to 19 inches tall. In direct contrast to the Irish Terrier, the Kerry Blue has developed a soft and silky coat which is plentiful and wavy and lends itself to sophisticated trimming and sculpturing. Today, the Kerry Blue is often the Terrier Group's showiest competitor. This is not only because of his modern flashy trim and determined character. Because he has more angulation than any other long-legged terrier, he covers a lot of ground when gating at a trot. So usually, he is the fastest moving breed in the terrier group. Together, these factors give the Kerry Blue definite style, which so often catches the judge's eye when competing against other breeds at dog shows. Although documented origin of the soft-coated wheat and terrier seems lost in the mists of time, loose references to open-coated wheat and dogs have occurred for centuries in Irish records and writings. Wheaton and Kerry Blue puppies used to be born in the same litter, evidenced by the black tips this six-month-old puppy still carries on its immature coat. This black will grow out, leaving a clear wheaten colour when the adult coat develops. Soft-coated wheaten puppies are born with smooth and close coats. These puppies are two and a half weeks old. The dark colour is confined to the tips of the hair with the eventual colour next to the skin. Black masks on soft-coated wheat and pups are very typical. This mask is beginning to clear, although the overall colour of these six-week-old puppies 
remains surprisingly red. The texture of puppy hair can be somewhat harsh and it can take until the dog is two years old for the soft and silky coat to develop. The mature coat should not stand off or be woolly or wiry. Rather, it should flow and fall naturally in loose curls or waves. This beautiful clear wheaten coat with its silken sheen distinguishes the soft coated Wheaton Terrier from all other breeds. Although the soft coated Wheaton Terrier appears the same size as the Irish and Kerry Blue Terriers, it can be a centimetre taller and is more heavily built. The soft-coated Wheaton Terrier's head is powerful, but not by its length like the head of the Irish and Kerry Blue. Instead, the soft-coated Wheaton has a square muzzle, not longer, but preferably shorter than the length of the skull. It also has a definite stop. This construction allows the soft-coated Wheaton Terrier to possess parallel head planes, a unique feature not demanded by any other terrier breed standard. At a trot, the soft-coated Wheaton moves with well-coordinated long, low strides. When running loose, the true beauty of the coat is seen. Soft-coated Wheaton Terrier has strong sporting instincts. This one is demonstrating dog sport, telling her handler she has found the villain. The dog must come to heel on command. So dog sport requires more control of the dog than any other discipline and simulates police work. This is a mock arrest. When the villain runs, the dog must grab the sleeve, but release it immediately on command. Dog sport is great fun, especially for a breed with strong sporting instincts, as the dog sees the sleeve as a toy.